I'm sure most of us know that scene pretty well. I would, I would hope. I, uh, I grew up loving Star Wars, especially The Empire Strikes Back. That's my uh, favorite from the Star Wars movies. In fact, I feel like after that original trilogy, they probably should have stopped. And uh, that's my opinion. Those were great movies. And we, we see that scene that's Luke and Darth Vader having this, this battle there. And Star Wars really is about a battle between good and evil, between the rebellion and the empire, between the light and the dark. And through the, that original trilogy, Luke is in this conflict. He's trying to, to choose between following the good and the evil and the light and the dark. And then here we, we saw Darth Vader as we were revealed that Darth Vader is his father that he never knew. And, and Darth Vader is trying to convince him to, to join the dark side and, and to, to join him and they'll, over, they'll rule the galaxy. And he says to, Darth Vader says this famous line, if you only knew the power of the dark side. If you only knew the power of the dark side. Vader knows that there's this, this power in the dark side. There's this force that pulls people into darkness. Yes, pun intended. There's this force that keeps trying to draw people into this darkness and he is trying to convince Luke to join him into that darkness. And we know that there's this, this battle between good and evil, light and dark. It's familiar all around. And in so many stories, we, we can read it. It's a very much the tale of humanity. There's this, this struggle that we face between good and evil, the light and the dark. And we can see it all around. And we know that this this pull of the dark side, this pull to be in the dark is, can, is very strong and can also feel almost irresistible at times. In fact, Jesus says that, that people love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and avoids it so that their deeds may not be exposed. Because darkness is this place where things can stay hidden where hate and evil can reign and fester, where you can get away with things that you couldn't get out in the open. It's also a place of, of shame and regret, where we can hide who we are and, and get around with covertness or subtlety and get away with depravity. This powerful dark side can be an oppressive force that just keeps us down. And it says, uh, and there's a light, right? That something happens that in the, when we come, go from the darkness and into the light, the light can overpower that darkness. And it, it begins to reveal the things that are hidden, the things that are around us that, are, are, that have been hidden. And they show us how things really are. Of course, stepping out into light can be a very overwhelming and painful experience. Maybe you've had this experience where you've gone to a, a midday movie and your eyes adjusted to being in that dark theater and then you, you step outside and all of a sudden your, your eyes are just accosted by the light and you begin to tears well up and you just want to close your eyes and run back into the darkness. But in that, in this darkness, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And in John chapter 8, he's, he's saying that, as we see before that, is this festival of the tabernacles that just, just happened in Israel. It's a, a, one of their festivals that they had, and it's a time for the, the people of Israel to remember what God did for them while they were wandering through the wilderness. They had lived, uh, their ancestors had lived in tents, and so the people then were living in, would spend a week living in tents just to remember what God had done and how God had guided the people as they wandered through the wilderness with a cloud by day and a fire by night. And at the end of that celebration, at the end of that festival, they would light candles all around, especially in the city of Jerusalem, and lighting these candles to, to kind of light up the temple, which was on a hill, so that the temple would glow. 
And it's out of that, out of that experience, they just experienced the lighting of the temple that Jesus says to the people around them that I am the light of the world. I'm that light that lights up the temple. I'm in that sense, he's claiming that taking that authority to claim to be God, that he is the light that brings a light into the world. Now, this is kind of an offensive statement to some of the people listening because he wasn't saying, I am the light of Israel, as they were hoping that they would be, but the light of the world. And so that there, Jesus was claiming that God's light wasn't just for those people, but for all people. And this imagery of light is, is all throughout the scripture. You can go through the scripture, if you did a, a word search, you would see that uh, light is uh, a theme throughout it, but especially in the Gospel of John. John loved that imagery of light. He used it over 20 times in his first 12 chapters, to, mostly to describe God or Jesus and how God and Jesus are the lights in the world. And then he talks about it in his letter, in 1 John. He writes about it two separate times. He talks about God being the light and in him being no darkness. And so he contrasts between the light and the dark, how the dark is this sinful state of humanity that we find ourselves in. And so Jesus comes in and says, I am the light of the world. And we're going through these statements that Jesus makes throughout the Gospel of John. He makes these various statements using the words, I am. And most people would know that he was referring to back when Moses was in the wilderness waiting before he would go to Egypt. And he, he sees this burning bush. And God tells him he's going to go into Egypt and, and help free his people. And Moses asks, who should I say sends me? And God says, I am. I am who I am. So Jesus kind of takes that idea of I am and he adopts it onto himself. And we saw that he said to the woman at the well, I am he. I am the Messiah. I am the Christ. I'm the one you have been waiting for. I'm the one that you are to worship in spirit and in truth. I, I lead you not to have to worship in a, a temple or a mountain, but wherever you are, you can worship me. And then we saw as he, after he fed the 5,000 people, the men and the women and the children, he, the people come to him and hoping they will get another meal. And he said, I am the bread of life. You know, it's not the food that you're trying to fill your stomach, but come to me. I am the sustenance. I am the nourishment. I am the essential meal that you need. And now today we're seeing Jesus saying, to the people after this festival as they're gathered there to hear him speak. He says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus knows that there's really two ways to go through this world, two ways to walk through life. And you can walk in the light with him, follow him with clarity and meaning and purpose, or you can stumble around in the darkness, try to stay hidden and avoid him. Because he knows that we live in this dark world, a world that's been fueled by our sin, a world that has chosen to reject the light. And we see that. We, we can turn on the news, we can flip through Facebook or wherever, and you see the power of the dark side. And each week our groups are gathering together to study these same I am passages. We're using this book and it's got some great uh, insights into it. And the author here, he says, Jesus boldly proclaimed that he is the light, bringing the presence and wisdom of God into the world for all who believe in him. Because of his light, we no longer have to walk around stumbling in darkness but we can rejoice and walk in the truth. Jesus is saying, I am the light of the world. This world may be dark. This world may have the overwhelming power of the dark side. But I have come in to help you step out of darkness and into God's marvelous light. In 1 John, he writes, 
God is light. There is absolutely no darkness in him. If we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, Jesus his son, cleanses us from all sin. Jesus says he is the light, that light of the world that pierces into the darkness. He pierces into our sinful and fallen world. He shines the light of God, the light of life into our world. Jesus is that light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. So what can we learn from this idea? What can we take from the idea that Jesus is the light of the world? And there's, there's plenty of things that we could pull out of it. I'm going to go through three ideas, three thoughts that we can let sink in. First is that Jesus, as the light of the world, he reveals God to us. And Jesus, as the light of the world, he illuminates our path. And as Jesus, as the light of the world, he expels the darkness. So let's take a look. First it says, Jesus is light of the world. He reveals God to us. As we think about who God is, and we try to define God, there's so many different definitions that people would say God is, right? And we begin to rely on our own perspective or what other people say about God. Because the word is kind of ambiguous. For us, you know, we can start to create God in our own image. So this is what Daryl Johnson says. When we begin with the generic word God, we start with our own ideas about God. But when we begin with Jesus, we begin with God's ideas about God. Jesus is God's personal self-revelation. So Jesus has come, he came to earth so that we can have a personal understanding of who God is. As we look through the scriptures, a lot of people try to debate on, on this God of the Old Testament, who seemed to be this you know, vengeful God, and this God of the New Testament, who seems to be all about grace and forgiveness. But as we look at it, we realize that this God that is in the Old Testament is kind of brought into the light when we see Jesus. We begin to understand who God really is through the light of Jesus. Because Jesus is the light of the world, and he reveals to us who, what God's character truly is. In fact, Jesus said to his disciples that if anyone has seen me, they have seen the Father. And so when we look at Jesus, we understand not just who Jesus is, but we understand who God is. And as we see how Jesus lived, or what Jesus was passionate about, and we know what who God is and how God is what God is passionate about. And the story that happens right before Jesus announces that he is the light of the world is the story of this woman who is caught in the act of adultery. Okay? And she's brought out. The man's not brought out, but this woman is brought out. And they say, Well, our tradition and our law says she was caught in adultery, that we get to stone her. We get to get take these big rocks and just throw them at her until she died. And say, and so like, so Jesus, what should we do? And here we get to see a picture of the way that God would respond, the way that God responds to this. And instead of shaming this woman, Jesus bends down. He begins to write in the dirt. The Bible doesn't tell us what he wrote. Lots of different theories of that. But really, He's pulling the attention off of this woman and onto himself. And these, these people who are asking him what we should do, they keep going, Jesus, what should we do? And finally, he says, who is ever without sin can throw the first stone. So in other words, if, if you don't have any sin, you can go ahead and, and start throwing stones at her. It says that one by one, they started to walk away because everyone knew they had sin. They had things that they too should be stoned for. They should be punished for. That they've all gotten away with. And here we see God's compassion for this woman, and also His compassion for these people, so they don't do something they would later regret. They don't take this person's life. 
So God is showing his, who he is through his interaction with this woman and with this crowd, helping them see how God responds to our sinfulness and our hurt and our brokenness in this dark world. Because God shows, or Jesus shows us as the light of the world who God is. But he also illuminates our path. It says here, Jesus said he was talking to his blind man. There's this blind man uh, in the next chapter of John, and, and he's about to heal him. And he says to them, I have come as a light into the world, so that everyone who believed in me would not remain in darkness. Jesus is saying that he has come to illuminate you, to show you the way to live, to show you how God wants you to be, so that you won't have to walk in darkness. You can understand what God has for you. Maybe you're familiar with this famous verse from Psalm 119. It goes, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And here he's saying the word of God, God's holy word helps illuminate the things around us, helps us see where we're going. What we need to understand is that it's not a light that shines everywhere, right? A big light. It, it helps see what's around you, like walking through the woods with a flashlight, right? You, and you're, you're seeing what to, to avoid, where, which way the path's going, what not to trip over. But it's not showing you the entire woods. And so he's saying your word, God's word, is kind of a lamp to your feet. It helps guide you along the way. It doesn't give you the big picture. And then later, John, he says that but writing about Jesus says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. So John is saying that this Word of God, which is the lamp to your feet, is Jesus. Jesus is here to, to help us see the path of life, to help us see the way that God is working and directing us and leading us. As Daryl Johnson writes, Jesus the light of the world leads us one step at a time. He doesn't lay for us, out for us a master blueprint for our lives. He does not tell us where it all ends. Instead, he gives us himself as the light and step by step unfolds the Father's will for us. I know I would love to have some sort of master plan. Some sort of this is exactly the way in which you should go, Dave. This is how you, the choices that you make that will lead you to where you need to be. But God doesn't give us the big picture and tells us this is your life. Nope. Just follow this way. He, he guides us each day, taking each step, you know, so that we can be slowly transformed and be able to know how to follow Him and make the right choices. I know I, I would love. Right now, as our families, is we get each seems like each week is something different. Right? With Henry's treatment, we're just like we think we're going to do one thing, and they say, "Nope, you're going to do another." And then, oh, you have to do this and do that. It seems like it's hard to make it through just make plans for one week. But God is just He is the light for that moment, and God wants us to trust Him in that day, in that moment, to, to guide us. And he will lead us through his things. And then, as the light of the world, as he guides us in our path, he expels the darkness. He expels that darkness which is keeping us hidden. He says, Jesus later says, I have come as light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. The power of the dark side is overwhelming. We are fallen creatures. We are living in darkness, seduced by his power. We want to come into the light, but it's so hard. We're, we feel somewhat desensitized and afraid to go into the light because of what will be hidden. Let's return back to that woman who was caught in adultery. As these people leave her, not to stone her, Jesus asks her, does anyone condemn you? She looks around and she only sees Jesus. And she says, no. He says, 
And she's like, I don't condemn you either. And he offers her forgiveness, but he doesn't just offer her forgiveness and say, uh, now go about your day. He says, now go and lead your life of sin. He's saying, you have now been brought into the light. Now I'm going to lead you to how to live into that light. And we know that the light, though, the light is no, is can overpower the darkness. Think about being in a dark room. And you, you light a light, you know, light a small light, and slowly that light penetrates the darkness. And it, so soon your eyes can see what's around you. Jesus is that light, and he, he shines in the darkness. He, he brings the light of life into our world. He shines his light of grace into our lives. Like he shined it into that life of that woman. He is compassionate, slow to anger. It's, it's, he shines his light because he doesn't want anyone to perish, but he wants everyone to turn to him. He shows us the light of his kindness as he hopes and leads us to repentance. The light of Jesus has come, and the light of Jesus reveals to us who God is. The light of Jesus illuminates our path. And the light of Jesus expels the darkness around us. So where do you need light this week? Where do you need the light to shine into your life? Do you need God to shine the light of his character into your life so you can understand and see him more clearly? Do you need the light of life to guide you in your path as you try to make decisions about what you're going to do? Do you need the light of life to reveal the darkness that's in your life? So you can follow him better. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I expel darkness. I illuminate your path. I reveal the truth of God. And then, he does something more interesting. He said to people, as he was teaching them the Sermon on the Mount, he says, you are the light of the world. Not just I am the light of the world, but now you are the light of the world. So let your light shine before others, that they may see your good works, and give glory to your Father in heaven. Saying, you are now my light in this world. As, as a follower of me, you are to let your light shine. You are to reflect the light of Jesus. Think about the moon, right? The moon reflects the light of the sun. It doesn't really have its own light, but it reflects the light of the sun. And since we are then called to reflect the light of the Son of Man, we are to reflect the light of Jesus into our world. We are to shine Jesus' character around, to show people the love of Christ, to help them see a light in their dark world, to reveal the character of Jesus and what Jesus has for them, to reflect Christ to those people, even when people that we disagree with, people we might have different opinions on, there are ways to, to shine Christ's light in our world as we interact with so many people. To let them know that they are loved and cared for by God. As our I Am book says, that we aren't adequate to be the light of this world. But Jesus has put his life in us. When we believe in him, that he is everything he claimed to be, that he is the, he is the light. When we receive him and his forgiveness, the life that he offers, we become an extension of his light his light. Jesus is the light of the world, and we are his little lights. We are the extension of his light. We are that little light of his, and he has called us to shine and fill the world. So let our little light shine. Amen.